Hi and welcome. This is Homebody Rundown and I'm HR. This is a yard and garden video and I am starting in our woods, which is at the back of our property on the north side. This area is just completely being taken over by this invasive ivy and I'm trying to figure out what to do about it. It's on the neighbor's property as well, so I can't get rid of all of it. This is the front of our house and I've been working on pulling back rocks and adding in paper like grocery bags as a weed barrier. At some point this summer we're going to get another load of rocks so I'll be able to fill this in more. Today we are taking this barberry and moving it to the other side of the front door. I really want some red in this space. Also adding in a few new plants including another Japanese forest grass under the dogwood tree a blue star juniper to the left of the stairs, and a pancake arborvitae. I have not gotten these before, but they have a really nice shape and color. They're not really blue, but they definitely lean more green blue, I'd say. Hubby is helping me with this barberry because it's requiring a lot of digging, plus it's heavy. Little bit of a mystery here under the oak tree. I just planted a fern here yesterday and found it looking like this this morning. This is May 15th and the color on this peony is gorgeous. Pretty sure I bought this one last year. Just transplanted these Siberian iris here this spring and they are doing fantastic. This is the backyard center flower bed with the bird feeder. The coral bells are starting to bloom and they just keep blooming for weeks or maybe even months. Hopefully they will attract lots of hummingbirds. This is the next day, May 16th, and something dug the fern out again after I replanted it. I don't know who's doing this. We have skunks, woodchucks, and raccoons, so who knows, but they are not messing with the two other ostrich ferns that I planted earlier in the season, or another fern that I planted the same day. Here's how the front of the house looks after adding in and moving around the plants. The barberry is not looking good. I do not know if it's going to make it. Bit of a gamble here, decided to add in a few petunias. The deer will come up and eat stuff right by the house, so not sure if these will make it. Add in a couple types of arborvitae, and here's that red barberry. It's losing a lot of leaves. Also moved in a golden barberry from the backyard. Still in the front of the house, in the space where we took out the red barberry, I added in a lemon thread false cypress. I really like these. They can get big, so I will have to keep it trimmed. If it'll grow here, I'm not sure because it's mostly shade. Across the way here on the west side of the front yard, a lot of this was new last year. It's been a work in progress because we're dealing with deer and walnut trees. Thankfully, this little blue spruce is doing well. I got it last year. It's my most expensive plant. I haven't moved this nine bark yet. The deer got it. I think I'm going to wait until fall, so keeping the fence around it. And it did manage to still have a flower. On the other side of the front yard fence, I wanted to show you this Wygela. It's looking gorgeous, and the deer seem to be leaving it alone. And here is a garbage plant, at least that's what I call it. It's a viburnum, but they're pretty much trash in our yard because as soon as they get leaves, they start being eaten. I think it's Japanese beetles, and they just look awful all summer. I could spray it, but I'd have to keep doing it, and it's really tall. The fern bed in the backyard is looking pretty good. All the ferns came back. There are a few other things in here. Uh, Siberian iris, a stilby, and grasses like Hakanakola. I put a fence around the astilbe just to be safe. I'd hate to lose all four of these. The deer do eat them. I've started calling this deer fenced area the shed bed because it's by the garden shed. It's filling in nicely. The primary plant in here is hostas. 
inside the fence now. This area with the lilies does get some sun, but most of this shed bed area is full shade. I think I have a hosta problem. The old veggie garden is still looking rough, but things are growing, especially this mint. It's out of control. I ended up putting the coral bells in here since we don't have a deck or a patio right now and the deer eat them. Just to the south of the veggie garden is a new flower bed area under our oak tree. I've started filling in with plants. I've split like the iris and the lamb's ear. Also moved a few things here um, like this Wajila from the front uh, of the house. It's looking beautiful. In the same flower bed, which I call the oak tree bed, um, I'm experimenting with some annuals. Typically I do not buy any annuals to put in the ground because of the deer and we have a lot of shade. But for some reason I thought I would see what would happen this year. I went with begonias and impatience and I have to say that I really see the appeal of putting annuals out because of the pops of color. Replanting that fern uh, that was torn out and decided to put some bricks around it. Hopefully that will solve the issue. So I'm pretty sure this is called Crocosmia. It is something that was given to me as a single bare root plant years ago, maybe eight years or so. Anyway, it's gotten really big and it almost never flowers, so I want to split it. The deer do not eat the leaves, but I do not know if that holds true for the flowers as well because it so rarely has had flowers. Added three pieces to this center bed in the backyard that I'm expanding. Cutting through the roots of this plant was tough, so oldest child helped me out. And honestly, it looks like we barely put a dent in the original plant. May 17th, the red barberry is really struggling. It's losing so many leaves, but I'm going to keep watering it. I'm sure the hot weather is not the right time to move shrubs, but we just do it when we have time to do it. Today's project is to chop off some of these baby lilacs and plant them out back. I ended up with three. Also, I do not know if this is a good time of year to do this. I'm going to add these little lilacs in where there's currently grass, so I gotta dig out spots. This blossom is off the tulip poplar, which is right above me. I love the flowers of this tree so much. I am out of my Espoma BioStarter fertilizer, so just using some of this miracle Grow stuff. Got all three of them in the ground. They're here to the east of the berry patch at the back of the yard. I saw these coconut fiber discs on Amazon and I ordered a pack. I thought it may be good to put out here because there's so much grass. And I just flipped over the chunks of sod to make a bit of a berm around each plant. Okay, I guess the bricks worked. The fern is still in the ground today. Some of the strawberries are starting to ripen. Getting some blooms on these transplanted Siberian iris. They are one of my favorites. Today my husband is cutting back the maple tree that is on the north side of the old veggie garden. I have lilies and peonies in here that need more sunlight, plus the tree is very uneven. Oldest child is helping with cleanup. It's pretty hot today. You can see here, at least midday, this area will get some sun now. None of the peony plants are very big. Most of them I moved into this area last year 
uh, to protect them from the deer or they were peonies I got from my great-grandmother's place last summer and I transplanted them here during a drought so they didn't have a lot of size yet but they did all survive. Some of the strawberries are ready to be picked today. They don't always have great flavor. Honestly, I'm not a big fan of growing strawberries. This is the backyard fern bed, and I think this may be the best season ever for the Siberian iris. I didn't think they were getting enough sun, so I moved a bunch, but they are blooming beautifully this year. Now we're in the shed bed inside the deer fence, and this poppy is beautiful. I bought it last year, I think. I have three different poppies in this area, and I don't think any of them get enough sun because sometimes they have green leaves and then they just die. Peonies are one of my favorites, and I always like that pale pink color on this one. This iris is new this year. I don't have any that look like this. It's really pretty. Almost everything in this area is stuff the deer will absolutely destroy. The iris are hit or miss. Sometimes they leave them alone and sometimes they come through and just eat off all of the flowers. So you come out to just a bunch of stalks. Checking out the lilacs that I just transplanted here um, just this week. We saw bunnies in this area so I scrounged up some little fences to put around them and I'm glad I did. The deer were in here as well. Another item that has to be fenced is this rose, but it's getting some blossoms, and I really like this pink color. Getting some wind and rain today. More peonies are opening up and looking really healthy. I need to research what to do when peonies get too tall. This one I had to fence up just so it wouldn't fall over. I'm not sure if I should be cutting them back in the spring. Also some pretty iris. Another look at the rose bush. It's just a day or two later and it has a lot more blossoms open. Walking by and notice that there's a deer inside the deer fence. The fence is just zip tied to the posts, so I cut off the zip ties on the front to make a really large opening for Dum Dum to get out, and then I realized he was gone or she was gone. So, unlike before, I did actually have the fences in front of the openings I used, so that's not where they got in. It looks like the deer fence was loose at the bottom on the north side, and they could just push under it, and that's how it got out as well, I guess. As for the damage, uh, she must not have been in here very long. There are no more flowers on this a still bee, but not too bad. I really like the hot pink flowers or dark pink on this coral bell. And getting the first blooms on the yellow reblooming lilies. The kids just installed this edging for me, which I so appreciate. It's made from recycled rubber and it bends a little, so pretty happy with it. I needed something to keep in wood chips. I'm experimenting with some annuals in this center bed as well. We'll just see what the deer do. Starting off June by trimming a bunch of shrubs and bushes, probably when we shouldn't, but when it comes to gardening, it's pretty much do it when we can do it or when my husband has time to help and it just is what it is. Hopefully they won't die, but they will look terrible for a while. It's going to be very hot for the next few weeks. Typically, we get trailer loads of mulch, but I really wanted to start working on this old veggie garden, so I took a kid with me to Lowe's to help get big bags of cedar chips, 
and was able to get one bed done. It looks so much nicer. Now I just have to get around to the rest of it. Another day in the old veggie garden added some miracle grow soil at the end of this bed and transplanted over some iris from the shed bed. They were getting way too much shade. The framing on these two center beds is falling apart, but I was able to move both of them back or to the east away from the gate so that we would have more room when you come in, like if I wanted to bring a wagon in. And we'll eventually need to get all of these strawberries moved. But you can see here, there's much more room for a wagon. In the backyard today, I took the trimmer and marked an edge for the center flower bed so the kids can put edging around this one as well. There's no real shape plan here. I guess it's just going to be blob, but I've gotten a lot added to it, um, including lamb's ear and some iris. Some of these astilbes are blossoming and are so beautiful. I love how soft they look, but a couple of them, I don't think they're going to flower at all. They haven't put up any stalks. Burning sticks. The kids always have sticks to pick up before we mow. It's a lot of trees. So something came through and ate off most of the flowers from the impatience and the begonias. I did not actually see the deer this time eat these, so I can't be sure. I'm pretty sure, but we do also have rabbits. I don't know if they eat these. But I have some hope here because I planted two verbena, and so far nothing has bothered them. Okay, maybe something bothered this one a little. I have two astilbe in the yard that are not fenced, and sometimes the deer leave them alone, sometimes... They don't, and they finally went for this one. It's the largest one I have, um, so I will have to move it. More rain. Expanding the flower bed area around this sassafras tree in the back. The grasses I transplanted last year, and now I'm transplanting in some lamb's ear and put in two nepeta that I bought at the store this year. These, um, the deer do not bother any of these. I also want some Japanese forest grass with a yellow color to put on the sides, just for something else other than green. And this is why I can't have all the pretty things. Adding that edging around the backyard center flower bed. We, are, this is the stuff we already added in the other um, oak bed. It's super easy. We don't do any trenching, we just install it on top of the grass. I've been ordering this from Walmart. I'll put a link in the description. To cover the grass, I'm using this contractor's paper from Lowe's. I just started using it this summer. I noticed it in the paint section and thought it might work well, and I'm really happy with it. You can tear it when it's dry, but I cut it with scissors, and it's pretty sturdy when it's dry probably similar to a paper bag from the store. However, when it's wet, it is very fragile because I'm usually working around existing plants. I have found spraying it works really well after I get it laid out. It makes it pliable and then I can kind of tear it and um, tuck it in around all the plants. But because it's so fragile, I think this is only working because I'm using it on grass and soft surfaces. If this was over sharp rocks or maybe stalks, I don't think it would work. I also really appreciate that the kids can install this for me. I took the trimmer and marked out that edge. Um, they had to make some adjustments because it does not bend as much as what I had originally wanted. Um, and to get everything to line up perfectly. You can see here, I am just covering our weedy yard grass. I do not remove any of it. Got all the grass pretty well covered and now just need to add the wood chips.
so happy to have all the grass and weeds covered so this area will be a lot less maintenance and it looks like a real flower bed now. Thanks for watching.